Hey ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my reading journey. It's almost midnight and I'm gonna quickly finish this story. The duplicity of Hargraves. So it's a bit late and we're gonna quickly do this. So let's begin. The last part. Uncle Moose. Moose. Uncle Moose took a chair and laid his head carefully on the floor beside it. Yes, sir. Of late I done Mounty Famous. <clears throat> when I first got to Nebraska, they folks come all round, round me to see them more calls. They ain't see no moose like them in Nebraska. I saw the moose for three hundred dollars. Yes, sir, three hundred. Then I opened a blacksmith shop, sir, and made some money and bought some land. He and my old oman Alderman done raised up seven seven ch children and all doing well except two of them what died. Four year four year ago ah uh, a railroad come along and shut a tall slam against my land, and so, Mars Pendleton, Alchemos, I'm worth eleven thousand dollars in money, property, and land. <clears throat> I'm glad to hear it, said the mayor heartily. Glad to hear it. And that little baby of your, yon, and that. And that little baby of your Mars Pendleton wanted one would you name Miss Liddy. I'll be bored that little tad. Don't grow up till nobody wouldn't know her. The mayor stepped to the door and called. Lida, dear, will you come? Miss Lida, looking quite grown up, and a little word came into her room. There now. What I tell you, I know that baby be plum growed up. You don't remember Uncle Moe's child? This is Aunt Cindy Moe's, Linda, explained the mayor. He laughed, sunny man, sunny mean. For the West, when you were two years old. Well, said Lida, I can hardly be expected to remember you, Uncle Mose, at that age. And as I say, you, I'm plum grown up and was a blast a long time ago. But I'm glad to see you, even if I can't remember you. And she was. And so was the mayor. Sometimes alive and tangible, tangible, had come to link them with the happy past. The three sat and talked over the olden times, the mayor, the Uncle Moe's, correcting or prompting each other as they reviewed the plantation scenes and days. The mayor inquired that the old man was doing so far from, from his home. Uncle Moose, I'm a delicate, he explained, to be to be Grand ba Baptist convention in this city. I never preached no one, but being a re residing elder in the church and able for to pay me own expenses, they sent me along. And na and how did you know? We were in Washington, inquired Miss Lydia. Lydia, Lydia, sorry, sorry, Lydia, the name is Lydia. There is a curly man works in the, in the huddle where he stops. What comes from mobile? He told me he sent Mars pedals on coming out on, out on dish here house one moment morning what i come for continued uncle moose 
reaching into his pocket. Besides the side of home folks, was to pay Mars Pendleton what I own owes him. Owe oh, me? said the mayor in surprise. Yes, sir. Three hundred dollars. He handed the mayor a roll of bills. When I laugh, old Mars says, take them more calls, most, and if <clears throat> and if it be so you get gets able pay for them. Yes, sir. Them was his words. The war had done left old Mars pull his off. Old Mars been long war dead. The dab the dead descends to Mars Paddleton three hundred dollars. Uncle Mose is plenty able to pay now. Plenty able to pay now. When the railroad buy, buy my land, I laid off to pay for them moves. Count the money, Mars Pendleton. That's what I sold them most for. Yes, sir. Tears were in Mayor Talbot's eyes. He took Uncle Moose. Moses hand and laid his other up onto his shoulder. Dear faithful old servitor, 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 he said in an unsteady voice, I don't mind saying to you that Mars Paddleton spent his last dollar in the world a week ago. We'll accept this money, Uncle Moose, since, in a way, it is a sort of payment, as well as a token of the lo loyalty and devotion of the old regime. Lydia, my dear, take the money. You are better fitted than I to manage its expenditure. Expenditure. <coughs> Take it, honey, said Uncle Moose. It belongs to you, it's Talbot money. After Uncle Moose had gone, Miss Lydia got a cry, had a good cry for joy, and the mayor turned his face to a corner and smoked his clay pipe volcanically, volcanically. The succeeding day saw the Talbots restored to peace and ease, Miss Lydia's face lost its weird look. The mayor appeared in a new frock coat in which he looked like a wax fig figure, personifying the memory of his golden age. Another publisher who read the manuscript of the anecdotes and reminiscence thought that with a little retouching and toning down, toning down, of the highlights, he could make a really bright and saleable volume of it. Altogether, the situation was comfortable, and not without the touch of hope that is often sweeter than arrived blessings. One day, about a week after their piece of good luck, a maid brought her a letter of Miss Lydia to her room. The most mark showed that it was from New York. Not knowing anyone there, Miss Lydia, in a mild flutter of wonder, sat down by her table and opened the letter with her seekers. Scissors. Seekers. Scissors. Scissors. This was that, that, this was what she read. Read. Dear Miss Talbot, I thought you might be glad to learn of my good fortune. I have received an accept and accepted an offer of two hundred dollars per, per week by a New York stock company to play Colonel Calhoun in a mag in a magnolia flower. There is something else I wanted you to know. I guess you'd better not tell Mayor Table. I was action act anxious to make him some amends 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 for the great help he was to mine in setting the part and for the bad humor his he was 
in about it. He refused to let me, so I did it anyhow. I could easily spare the 300. Sincerely yours, H. Hopkins Hargraves. Postscriptum. How did I how did I play Uncle Moe's? My table passing through through the hall, so Miss Lita's door opened and stopped. Any mail from for us this morning, Lydia dear? He asked. Miss Lydia slid the letter beneath a fold of her dress. The mobile chronicle came, she said promptly. It's one of it's on the table in your study. All right, guys, that was a good story about about Hargraves and his playing. So we're going to continue with the new story tomorrow. Thank you for joining me today and see you. Bye.